안녕하세요. NIPL 치과 원장 임필입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Impil of LIP Dental Clinic. I'm honored to be here with you as a master course basic director. And before we go into offline master course, parts of the lecture that is provided offline will be addressed online. albeit in a short time frame. Today I'm going to talk about GBR. Let's look at basics. The definition of GBR. As you all know, it is guided bone regeneration. In other words, as shown in the image, it is a procedure that promotes bone regeneration by securing a space in the bone defect area using a barrier membrane and blocking cells other than bone cells from infiltrating the bone defect. GBR stems from GTR. GTR is in the sphere of periodontology. With the dawn of implant era, GTR has developed into GBR. GTR is a procedure which regenerates periodontal tissue, such as periodontal ligament, cementum and alveolar bone using a barrier membrane periodontal tissue is regenerated the principles of gbr and gtr is the same as for gbr we're replacing implants what is necessary is bone and it regenerates bone In GTR, periodontal tissue is regenerated, such as periodontal ligament. In the case of GBR, bone is regenerated. There are important factors in regenerating bone. There are three important factors. First is maintaining space for osteogenesis. Second is to stably manage blood clots. In order to do this, there needs to be good blood supply. That is very important. Osteoblasts need to be induced in order to get new bone formation. We need to bear these in mind. We need to think about in what kind of environment we can gain the desired bone regeneration. For new bone formation, among the different factors that play in, if you look at the first, maintenance of space, in order to get the new bone formation, we need to be able to protect the space from external pressure. Bone is not generated within a couple of days. It is generated over an extended period of months. If there is collapse or other issues, then the desired bone may not result. In order to get good osteogenesis, maintaining space is essential. Also, blood clot needs to be stably formed and there needs to be good blood supply. These conditions need to be satisfied for osteoblast to occur. For instance, when we place implant in the lower 
Because of thick cortical bone, blood supply may not be good. In order to overcome that, decortication is done to overcome such challenge. This is to allow good blood supply in the defect area. Only then will osteoblast occur. As shown, in order to get good bone regeneration, osteoblast needs to be formed within the defect area to get the desired bone. In doing GBR, the most important principle is this. In 2006, Hong Lei Wang named it PASS, P-A-S-S, an abbreviation of major principles that need to be abided by. First is primary wound closure. Second is angiogenesis. There needs to be good blood supply. Third, space maintenance. As mentioned, space needs to be well maintained in the area where we want to regenerate the bone in order to get the desired result. Therefore, space maintenance is very important. Blood clots or bone graft material needs to be stably maintained. Implant fixation itself is not the end. We need to get good implant fixation as well as bone graft and blood clot stability. Primary wound closure. There are many factors to consider including incision to get tension-free wound closure. Incision and suture is the start and end of surgery and it determines the final result of GBR. Therefore, when beginning surgery from incision stage, you need to make many considerations and put some thought into it. There's crystal design and paracrystal incision. This incision is made away from the crest of natural tooth and can be made either lingually or buccally. And there's a vertical incision. Depending on a different incision design, you can get different results, so therefore the surgeon needs to put some thought into it and determine which incision to use. If you take a look at the image, in the bone defect area, non-resorbable membrane has been used for GBR. In certain cases, non-resorbable membranes can be used. In other cases, resorbable membrane can be used as well. Or you can use titanium mesh, like Ausbuilder from Ostem. In whatever case, in order to get successful GBR, in the final stage of surgery, appropriate suture is necessary. Suture is important in the sense that we need to get primary closure and good soft tissue healing in order to get the desired results. Next is angiogenesis. In other words, it is blood supply. It's the same expression. In the area where we want to generate the bone and the defect, as much as possible, there should be enough blood supply. In terms of soft tissue, sufficient blood supply is required in order to get the good bone formation. As mentioned, space maintenance is very important. When we place bone graft materials here and add a membrane and then do suture, this is how surgery is complete. Up until bone formation is completed, this space needs to be maintained, but if there is collapse, we will not be able to get the desired results. We need to make sure that the surgical site is stable and fixed. 
you can do different types of suture or screws so that this surgical site does not move. This is necessary to get the desired effect. Let's look at the types of bone defect. Uh, on the far left is the extraction socket with intact walls. Second, there's a horizontal bone defect. In other words, horizontal resorption has occurred. If we divide the horizontal bone defect, there's dehiscence where implant top is exposed and there's fenestration where the lower portion of the implant is exposed and there's an extensive bone defect as well. Depending on different defects, we need to apply GBR procedures. In the case of a vertical bone resorption, not just horizontal, but vertical bone resorption can occur and you need to do vertical bone augmentation. In the case of number four, where there is a horizontal and vertical resorption, the level of surgical technique required may be very sophisticated. If you look at the extraction socket, after extraction, there is bony wall. Implant will be placed and bone graft can be done. Let's look at a clinical case. Right after extraction, within the extraction socket, implant has been placed. And you can do bone graft here or just to skip it. The bone defect type. There is intact bony wall around the implant. We can get good results and bone regeneration easily in this case. There is horizontal bone defect. The bone is resorbed horizontally. Let's divide this into two. First, there's dehiscence where implant top is exposed and fenestration is where the bottom of the implant is exposed. Let's look at the image. As shown, on the left and right, there's where implant top is exposed and where the implant bottom is exposed. Let's look at a clinical case. The buccal side of the implant top is exposed. We can see this very frequently clinically, and the implant bottom is exposed. There's fenestration. When you do surgery, the fenestration defect is much easier to treat compared with a dehiscence defect. This is a case where there has been extensive bone resorption and a horizontal defect. In this case, there's intrabony defect where it is within the bony housing and there's also extra bony defect where it is beyond the bone housing. Intra bony defect is much easier to treat than extra bony defect. When we do bone regeneration, we need to try to place the implant within the intra bony defect. This is intra bony defect. This is extra bony defect. If the implant is beyond bone housing, then space maintenance becomes even more important. This is vertical bone defect. And this is an extensive case where there is horizontal and vertical bone resorption. In this case, it will require extremely high surgical skills. It will be very difficult to treat. Let's look at the thickness of the surrounding bone. Yes, of course, if there's more bone around the implant, that would be optimal, but at least on the buccal side, there needs to be 1.5 millimeter, and on the lingual side, there needs to be 1 millimeter of bone. 
In that way, we'd be able to place the implant and proceed with surgery more easily. Or else we would need to do GBR or other procedures to augment bone. If there's lack of bone on the buccal side, GBR needs to be performed. When you do GBR, you need to consider that the grafted area can be resorbed as well. Therefore, overgraft is necessary. Mesiodistally, the bone around the implant should be 1.5 millimeter at least between the natural tooth and implant in order to avoid the bone resorption. The inter-implant distance should be at least 3 millimeters in order for the bone to be maintained. The figures that have been mentioned are based on external type implant and the figures may go down in the case of internal submerged type implant. In general, in order for it to be considered safe, there needs to be at least a 3 mm of distance. There needs to be 3 mm of distance to be safe. If it is narrower than that, then bone in between can be resorbed. In order to prevent this kind of situation, when you place implants, you need to make appropriate considerations. You need to adjust the inter-implant distance. If the buccolingual bone height is different, you need to place the implant one or two millimeters below considering the biologic width at the line connecting the bone peak. Implant needs to be placed deep. That is the general standard. It is entirely up to surgeons' to surgical skills in terms of whether or not to do GBR when doing implant placement, whether or not bone augmentation will be done. So you need to make decisions accordingly depending on situations. Today we have looked at the basics of GBR. If you're interested in more specifics, Come and study with me at Offline Master Course. Thank you.